The last phyla that we're going to talk about in Kingdom Fungi is Phylum Basidiomycota. And while there's definitely some really interesting mushrooms in this kingdom, like the bioluminescing ones you see in this picture, these are going to be super familiar to you because pretty much all of the fungi that we eat are found in Phylum Basidiomycota. In fact, a lot of the fungi you see in forests are actually in Basidiomycota. So let's explore them a little bit more. So Phylum Basidiomycota refers to the club fungi. Similar to the zygospore fungi, similar to the sac fungi, club fungi, that club is referring to a reproductive structure, which I'll point out more when we start talking about its life cycles. The name Basidiomycota is coming from the structure that the spores are found in. The spores are found in a structure called the basidia, or basidium, whether you're singular or plural. And most mushrooms that you see are found in Phylum Basidiomycota, both the ones that you see out in nature, as well as the ones that you might cook with. So I'm going to talk about the life cycle as usual, but before I do that, I actually want to show you something kind of cool about Phylum Basidiomycota that ties all these different types of mushrooms together. And it's taking a look at this picture here on the left. This is looking at the underside of a typical mushroom. And all of these little slats that you see, all of these different lines that you see are called gills. And that's actually labeled up here as well. So gills. Now gills are typically a respiratory structure in fish. Um, that's kind of, uh, we'll talk about gills more later in, this, um, later in this course. But this is not actually anything to do with respiration at all. It was given the name gills because of the similarity in look um, to the gills that we see in different animals, um, but again, not used for respiration at all. Instead, this is where a lot of the reproductive structures is. As I mentioned before, spores are grown um, in a basidia, and all of the basidia are found in these gills. And you can see there's hundreds upon hundreds of gills in these mushrooms, and we'll talk about why that's important here soon. So similar to our other mushroom phyla, here is a textbook version of the life cycle, but we're going to simplify the life cycle to just four major key words, the basidiocarp, basidia, basidiospore, and meiosis. And so, as usual, we're going to go ahead and draw this, um, we're going to draw this life cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. All right, so what's really nice about phylum basidiomycota, not only is it following the, the general rules that we see with our other phyla, but this one, this life cycle is so similar to ascomycota that you might feel that I'm going a little fast, but it's because we've actually gone really in depth on this life cycle before. So similar to our um, ascomycota, I'm gonna start with soil. This is the substrate that it's growing in, and it could be growing in a log or on top of some other dead plant material, but I'm just going to use soil. And our very first step that we've seen actually in the two other fungal phyla is we have hyphae. So here's hyphae. Remember hyphae that are underground are haploid. And similar to the last two uh, fungal cycles that we talked about, we're going to have opposite mating types. And if we have opposite mating types, and if they get close and close and close and close together, they end up touching and they end up growing um, together. They end up fusing. I think fusing is probably a better word. They end up fusing. So we have two haploid genetic material coming together and fusing to create something that's diploid. Now that something in Basidiomycota, here is my mushroom. And I'm going to try to draw a nice mushroom. Here we go, nice. And these are representing all the gills that are underneath. So here is our mushroom. Now, yes, it is a mushroom, but again, we wanna kind of use the official terms uh, or the more scientific terms to describe it. So this entire structure is the reproductive body, just like uh, in our previous ones. But specifically, this reproductive body is called the basidio, basid, oh goodness, I totally, okay, hold on. <laughs> that was a total mess up right there. It's called the basidiocarp. So if you're spelling it and you're like, okay, I know how to spell that. Okay, 
basidiocarp. So again, the official name of the reproductive structure, the official name of the structure that is growing above ground is called the basidiocarp. We are in basidiomycota. So you're going to see that root basidia a lot. Now, I did write that it is diploid. Remember that these are two haploid hyphae that come together. They fuse before they start growing in this basidiocarp. So two haploid things coming together and fusing is going to create this diploid structure. Now, similar to what we saw in ascomycota is that the actual reproductive structures, the actual spores, although yes, you can see the mushroom just with your naked eye, you can't see the spores and those structures. Those are microscopic. They're single cellular structures. So we're going to zoom in and all of these reproductive structures are found on the gills. This is why I pointed out the gills on the previous slide. So on the gills is where we're going to be zooming in. So as if you were looking in a microscope, this is what we're looking at. So I'm going to draw this line. This is representing the gill. So this is representing the actual like mushroom itself. And then on the gill is a structure. Honestly, it looks like a little mound. Apparently, this looks like a um a club like a like a like caveman club they think this little mound reminds them of a club hence the name club fungi i don't make this up i just share that information with you guys so this is where the name club fungi is coming from because apparently this structure looks like a caveman style club i don't know all right so on our gill is this structure and what this structure is this club like structure this is called the basidia now, it's similar to the ascus, similar to the sporangium. The basidia, in this case, is like a little nub, right? You, you've got your, your fist and then like part of your finger comes up. It's still part of your fist, right? That is still part of this ascocarp. It's just a structure on the ascocarp. So this basidia is going to be diploid. Because again, it is just part of the basidiocarp. So that's why it is diploid, is it's still part of the same exact structure. Now the basidia, this is where the spores are being created. And so these spores kind of grow a little bit differently. You don't need to worry about that too much, but I'm just letting you know, because when I start drawing them, you're going to be like, well, that's weird. And you're right. So <laughs> the spores are growing kind of externally. They're growing like on top of the basidia. And I'm drawing a certain number on purpose. So as you're drawing, make sure you're doing four, as you see. So these spores very specifically refer to as basidiospores. So the basidiospores. So again, they're spores and all of the same uh, across. So ascospores, regular spores, they all do the same thing. But we do give this emphasis, like these are basidiospores. It just tells us more about the fungus that it's actually coming from. But the function itself is all the same. So basidiospores are created through a process, a process we've talked about quite a bit now. So they're created through the process of meiosis. Remember, meiosis is happening where those spores are being made. So in this case, it's happening in the basidia. So within the basidia, there's specialized cells that are undergoing meiosis. As they undergo meiosis, they're going to create these four, very exactly four basidiospores. Because these are undergoing meiosis, this means these basidiospores are haploid. Okay, so that means they're single end, they're haploid. And similar to what you saw in the other fungal cycles, that within the right conditions, whatever that means for this particular fungal, for this particular fungus, those spores are going to get released from the basidia, and they are going to enter the environment. So I'm just going to draw circles all over the place. These are spores being released. And I'll start over in the bottom left corner. And if conditions are right, there's enough moisture, there's enough nutrients, some of those spores are going to start growing. And again, just growing. So they're, they're not meeting with anything else. They're not fusing. They're not splitting. They're just growing. So if you have haploid spores, they're going to be growing into this haploid hyphae. 
now our, our cycle can repeat itself. Now that we have hyphae back in our soil, now we can start talking about, okay, negative and positive meeting each other, etc. So again, this life cycle, although yes, we're using different words, hopefully you're able to notice some of the connections between these different parts of the life cycle. Basidia spores are pretty much the same as ascospores, which are pretty much the same as regular spores. Meiosis is happening in the reproductive structure, the basidia, the ascus, and the sporangium of all three of them. Hyphae of opposite types are haploid, they come together. So all of the fungal life cycles are pretty much the same. Just keep in mind the correct terminology for each one. It's kind of nice with ascomycota and basidiomycota because it's basidiospores, basidiocarp, basidia. So hopefully that helps you a little bit get, keep those terms together. So again, as usual, um, sorry to kind of keep repeating myself, but in your notes, not only draw this picture or, or draw hopefully a better version of this picture, but you can also, okay, this is my first step. This is my second step. This is my third step. Again, the numbering itself doesn't matter, but make sure that you can actually describe what is happening. Yes, at the moment you might be like, ah, like, yeah, I know what happens, but what about when you look back at your notes? Can you actually get that information back a week later, two weeks later? So that's why I encourage you to actually write out the steps as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So let's go back to the slides. I just want to show you a couple of more pictures before uh, we kind of end this section. <clears throat> so again, here's that underside of the mushroom that shows all of these gills. So every single one of these gills has a basidia on it. Um, it has multiple basidia on it that have all of these basidiospores. And so the more gills a mushroom has, the more basidia and basidiospores are being created. And so the more likely to reproduce. As I mentioned in a previous video, it's a numbers game. The more spores you can reproduce, the more reproductive material you can reproduce, the more likely you get to reproduce. Just to show you some um, like microscopic pictures so you can get an idea of what these like really look like. So these two things are showing us the same thing. So I'll ta talk about the left image first and I apologize for the quality of it. So the line that you're seeing kind of going down the middle, this kind of like snake like structure, this is if you were to like cut the mushroom, like cut a gill off and you're looking like, you're looking down at the gill. So on either side of the gill, there's tons of basidia Basidium is singular. And what we're seeing is all the spores coming off of it. So again, on a single gill, a single part of that mushroom, you got tons and tons of basidia, tons and tons of basidia spores. You can't really see that club-like structure really great on the left-hand photo, so let's look at the right hand. The right-hand side is again looking at a gill, <clears throat> but almost looking at it head on. Like if you were looking at it like I'm looking at the mushroom right in front of me and the mushroom is like upright. So I'm looking kind of straight on. And so what we can see is here is that pasidia or club-like structure. And here you can actually count the one, two, three, four basidiospores that are on it. This one actually looks like a lot of the basidia don't have basidiospores. So they either haven't developed yet or they have developed and they've already been released into the environment. But again, just kind of showing you this club-like structure and the exactly four basidiospores that are found on them. So again, phylum basidiomycota is the ones, the mushrooms that you have seen the most of. This is definitely what you've consumed the most of. Uh, so play a really important function in human diet. And similarly, their life cycle, very similar to the other fungal life cycles. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, try to focus on the similarities between them versus thinking of them all as all three very different things, because there's a lot more similarities than there are differences.